One of the signs of end times that Jesus gives us is pestilences, horrible plagues and epidemics. In troubled times, it is important for us to seek a fresh and richer vision of the return of Christ. The backbone of end time teaching is Matthew 24 and the parallel chapters of Mark 13 and Luke 21. Please read these chapters. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you an increasing vision of the focus of all proper end time teaching. Luke 21, 27, Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Jesus is absolutely sovereign over all the nations and all the earth, and he uses these signs to usher in the wonderful new age of his glorious rule on earth, where everything will be made new and made right. Hallelujah. The signs are likened to the birth pains of a mother bringing joyous new birth. Let your heart be filled with joy in the vision of Christ's imminent return. Matthew 24, 4. Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name and deceive many. When you hear of wars, rumours of wars, revolutions, do not be alarmed. But the end is not yet. There will be earthquakes, famines, pestilences, and great signs from heaven. You will be hated of all nations because of me. Many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many. Because of the increase of lawlessness and wickedness, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who stands firm, who endures, shall be saved. We are called to watch out for deception, betrayal and our own hearts. There are and will be impostors, pretenders, fearmongers and hoaxers, and we need to ask for and receive discernment, God's ability to perceive the fruit in a person's life who claims to be someone. By their fruits you shall know them. If there is counterfeit, that means that God will also provide the genuine. We thank God for the excellent fruit produced by him in the life of Ravi Zacharias, who has just been promoted to glory. Who will rise up to take his place? We need to guard our hearts against the love of many growing cold, the betrayal from others, even in our own family, and the increase of lawlessness. When these things happen, the Holy Spirit moves in a special way to renew our first love. In end times, there are two revivals happening simultaneously, a revival of lawlessness and a revival of the Holy Spirit as prophesied in Joel and quoted on the day of Pentecost. In the last days it shall be, God says, I shall pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This brings us then to the most critical sign that Jesus gives us in verse 13. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all the world as a witness to all the nations, all the ethnic groups, and then the end shall come. Study of troubled times shows that God uses them to advance the fulfillment of this vision and the promise that God gave to our father Abraham in you, in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The book of Revelation gives the glorious vision of people from every tribe, kindred, nation and tongue worshipping the Lamb, Jesus Christ. This is the purpose of the Holy Spirit revival we are entering into. Yes, we will be put on the spot for the faith we have in Jesus, but we are commanded not to worry or even meditate on what we will answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. It will turn out to be an occasion for testimony. It won't be you speaking, but the Holy Spirit repeatedly speaking through you. Not a hair of your head shall be lost. In your patience, possess your souls. The Passion Translation, don't worry, my grace will never desert you or depart from your life. And by standing firm with patient endurance, you will find your soul's deliverance. Luke 21, 12 to 19. You see, 
not only have we been saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus, his grace also carries us through to the end so that we will be saved. Twas grace has brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home. We have confidence in, we depend upon God's grace to impart to us the perseverance we need. Do not worry about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall wear, for that is what the unbelievers chase after. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When you see the abomination that causes de desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, then let those in Judea flee to the mountains, Matthew twenty four fifteen. This calls for further study in the book of Daniel, especially chapters 9, 11 and 12, and has multiple fulfillments. Firstly, in 168 BC, the Greek ruler Antiochus Epiphanes betrayed the Jewish leaders, demanded to be worshipped as a god, and sacrificed a pig to Zeus on the altar in the temple in Jerusalem. This was a huge abomination. Secondly, almost 40 years after Jesus said these words, a Roman legion surrounded Jerusalem and immediately believers in Christ, in obedience to Jesus' words, fled to the mountains in Galilee. The city was finally taken in 70 AD and General Titus went into the temple and sacrificed to Jupiter, set up idols in the city, then totally destroyed the temple as Jesus prophesied. Thirdly, we are to watch out for the rising of the spirit of Antichrist that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and the sovereign lordship of Jesus Christ and irrationally persecutes believers in Christ and also the Jews. We watch out for Antichrist and the Antichrist called the beast in the book of Revelation. The Apostle John says in 1 John 2.18, Little children... It is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. By this we know that this is the last hour. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. You know the truth. That anointing which you have received from him abides in you and teaches you about all things, and is true and is not a lie. And just as... As it has taught you, you will abide in him. Mark thirteen thirty one. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall never pass away. Concerning that day and hour, no one knows when it will arrive. This is why you must be on your guard. Be alert, be watching, be waiting and praying, for you do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away, but before going, he placed his servants in charge and gave each one work to do while he was away. Then he commanded the watchman to be on guard at all times. Therefore, keep watch, for you do not know when the owner of the house will return. Be alert, for he is coming suddenly. Do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Just after the Lord's Supper, the Lord said to his disciples, Watch and pray, so that you do not enter into temptation. Reading from the Passion Translation, Luke twenty-one twenty-seven. And at last, when you see how the Son of Man comes, surrounded with a cloud, with great power and miracles, in the radiance of his splendour, and with great glory and praise, it will make you jump for joy, for the day of your full transformation has arrived. On the night he was betrayed, where he was also let down by his friends, Jesus gave himself for us. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. He gives to us his amazing grace. Undeserved favour. He cut the covenant in his own body and in his blood. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing grace. 
this gift you have given us, your, your very self. We give ourselves afresh to you and we receive your saving grace. Thank you that your body was broken for us. Let's eat together. Likewise, Jesus took the cup and after he had blessed it, said, This is the cup of the covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Take it, drink from it, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord, for your shed blood that washes away every sin, that breaks the power of cancelled sin, so that we can now live for righteousness. Thank you, Lord, for washing and cleansing us. Thank you for your precious blood. We drink together. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your soon glorious return, that you hold the heavens and the earth in the palm of your hand, and you are doing great things in this season. Thank you, Lord, that you're getting the whole earth ready for this wonderful new age, the age of the Messiah. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Make us ready, Lord God. Lord, pour into us this perseverance. Enable us to be discerning and not be deceived. Enable us to be revived and renewed. Lord, renew our first love. Lord, when things happen that disturb us, bring your perfect peace. Bring your perfect peace to everyone listening. Your peace, your renewal, your strength. Enable us to be reliable, dependable and faithful in the work you have given us. Cause us to work well, watching and waiting for your return. Cause us to be constantly watching and be watch carers for others. Thank you, Lord, for the moving of your Holy Spirit. We pray for Jerusalem and the Jewish peoples that you would open their eyes to you, the Messiah, having come already as the Lamb of God. Open their eyes, Lord God. Thank you for the revival we hear about, the many Jews coming to believe in Jesus. We thank you for the revival happening now around the world. We pray you would cause each one of us to enter into the fullness of this mighty end times revival in the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Spirit who dwells in us and teaches us all things, the truth. To you be all the praise and glory forever and ever. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. We look forward to step three. Uh, when we'll be able to physically meet together again, possibly in July, uh, and uh, while practicing all the hygiene and distancing rules. The Lord bless you with a marvelously rich 